Asian Pacific American Heritage Month is our collective time to celebrate the achievements of Asian American and Pacific Islander Americans and recognize their critical contributions throughout U.S. history, society, and culture. This year, UT Southwestern aims to highlight the journey traveled from east to west, honoring the legacy of those who traveled to the United States and added to the diverse fabric of this nation. The origin of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month dates to 1978, after resolutions were passed by Congress and signed into law by President Jimmy Carter, which designated seven days in May as Asian Pacific American Week. In his first proclamation for Asian Pacific American Week, President Carter spoke of the significant role Asian Pacific Americans have played in the creation of a dynamic and pluralistic American society with their contributions to the sciences, arts, industry, government, and commerce. In that proclamation, President Carter also spoke on how the United States has not always fully appreciated the talents and the contributions which Asian Americans have brought to the nation, and how until 1965, Asians were discriminated against through exclusionary immigration and naturalization laws and other discrimination in education, housing, and employment. In 1990, Congress passed another law which expanded the observance of Asian Pacific American Heritage Week to a month in May 1990. This law charged the people of the United States to observe Asian Pacific American Heritage Month with appropriate ceremonies, programs, and activities. Pursuant to that law, every U.S. president has annually issued proclamations designating May as Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. We celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month in the month of May for two reasons. First, to commemorate the arrival of the first known Japanese immigrant to the U.S. on May 7, 1843. Second, to honor the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad on May 10, 1869 the building of which up to 20,000 Chinese workers participated in. Beginning with the 2009 proclamation, presidents have expanded the commemoration to include the full term Pacific Islanders, and presidential proclamations have been issued in honor of Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. A common thread amongst many API members of our UT Southwestern community is resilience as many overcame a number of challenges on their journey west or shattered barriers and perceived ceilings as they set a new bar for creativity and excellence in science, discovery, and education. We want to recognize a few of our leaders who have helped tell the story of their journey from east to west. My name is Priya Dondaker. I am the Associate Vice President for Surgical Services and Digestive Diseases, and I joined UT Southwestern in January of 2013. I think it's very important that we celebrate API Heritage Month um, because it gives us an opportunity to showcase our culture and our heritage and what that means to us and what that means to everybody else. And while there's a focus on a month, it really should be something that we celebrate and, and um, educate people on all year. I'm really proud to be a part of this group. Um, I'm really proud of the opportunity to share my experiences because there are people that um, could be watching this today that see something in me that they could see for themselves. I'm first generation Indian American, so it's really about my parents' journey here. So my father uh, made the decision to further his education. He was looking to get actually his second master's in industrial engineering. And Mississippi State University was going to offer him an assistantship. So after they finished, uh, he, he finished his education at Mississippi State. They got their first, my father got his first job in a town called Kosciuszko, Mississippi. Another small town, probably about 60 miles outside of Starkville. And there was a different set of challenges to face there. So when my father was looking for housing, um, he wasn't able to find any uh, um, housing that was available to him. So what it turned out to be was that no one was actually willing to rent a house to him. Um, my parents were the first foreigners in that town and 
They looked different, they were different, and to the other people in that town, they were an unknown. And so I think that, you know, the people that had housing to offer were skeptical and probably a little apprehensive, just that unknown, not having any exposure to Indians or anyone of, of um, a foreign descent. So it actually took my father's supervisor, his boss at the time, to talk to the landlord and say, it's okay, I, you know, I've hired him, I can vouch for him, so you know, please rent them a house. So I think that was a little bit shocking to my parents too. So the courage that it takes to start over, uh, leave your family and really build a life here is, is really uh, inspiring. And so, you know, when I reflect on my own challenges as a first generation um, Indian American, while my parents had their challenges, we as first generation had similar challenges. Um, for example, I, you know, I went to a very small private school in outside of Jackson, Mississippi, and um, I was the only person that looked like me other than my sister. And so it, it was challenging to be the only person that looked like me and, and what that meant to others. And in moments, I felt very accepted, but then in other moments, I didn't, for example, you know, not not being asked to go to homecoming or, or things like that, because, you know, I don't, there was probably a hesitancy to, to ask the one person that looks different from everybody else. Anecdotally and fun fact, uh, fast forward to the late 90s, when my husband and I were in the Chicago area and um, we had uh, received or, or um, got tickets to go see the Oprah Winfrey show back when she had her show in Chicago after the end of the show, kind of as the credits are rolling. And so I stood up and I said, uh, I just wanted to say hi and say hi from Kosciuszko, Mississippi. Um, for those of you that don't know, Oprah is was, was born uh, in Kosciuszko and lived a portion of her life in Kosciuszko. And uh, she, she stood up and she kind of turned her head to the side and she said, wow, there wasn't none of you there when I was there. And of course the audience chuckled, but you know, I share that because I, it, was, it was really indicative of how people in that town, you know, really, we were the first there. And so I take that forward to now. When I um, first joined UT Southwestern in my role, it was really interesting. I spent some time rounding in, in all of the areas and I met with an individual that that's of Indian descent. And he really said to me, he goes, you know, it really makes us proud to have someone of Indian descent in your position. Um, it, it's nice to see people in positions like yours that look like us. And so, you know, that's, that's very rewarding. And I think it helps um, others know that um, it's important that um, there are people that look like you uh, everybody wants that level of acceptance. Everybody wants that level of appreciation for your differences. My name is Lou Le, and I have been at UT Southwestern for 17 years. I am a physician scientist and a professor of dermatology here at UT Southwestern. I was born in the midst of the Vietnam War. Uh, my mother was a teacher and my father was an officer in the South Vietnam Army, uh, working with the, uh, with the American. So when the communists took over uh, South Vietnam, uh, they put my father in the re-education camp and I was not allowed uh, to go to a university uh, city. But I, I was a young boy. My dream was to go to school. I just wanted to go to school uh, and I have big dream. So I decided to escape from, from Vietnam. I, I was 16 year old, just finished 10th grade. Uh, and I got together with my other three friends who was older than, than me. Uh, and we decided to cross the border from Vietnam to Cambodia. And then in Cambodia, we put our money together to buy a very small boat. In fact, it's about six meter long and about one and a half meter wide. And then we just set out to uh, the sea uh, with the hope that we will go to Thailand because Thailand was the only the closest uh, country that accept a re refugee from, from Vietnam. Luckily, we uh, make it 
to uh, Thailand. In the refugee camp, I uh, uh, began to apply to come to the U U United States. It, it was hard. Looking back, it was even harder to apply to go to medical school uh, because there was just so many people who wanted to go to the uh, United States. But luckily, my father worked with the Americans, so that helped my uh, uh, application. And I finally made it to Long Beach, California after uh, more than a year living in the re refugee camp. There were so many ch challenges. Now, uh, think about it. I was just 17 years old by myself without my mom and my, my dad uh, uh, coming to a, a whole new country, what a whole new country, and everything was new to, to, to me. But most importantly, I needed a job. Uh, I have to work to support my myself. So uh, uh, after uh, uh, a few weeks of, of landing in, in California, I, I found a job working at a McDonald's. I went to school from 8 to 3.30 or so. I have to quickly uh, uh, took the bus home, changed my clothes to the McDonald's uh, uniform, took the bus uh, to McDonald's and started working from 5 to, to midnight. The problem is that by the time I, I, f I finished the, the, the ship, there was no, uh, no more bus. So I literally have to walk home from, from McDonald's almost five miles. So it took me almost an hour and a, and a half in the middle of, of the, the night. And then I have to quickly wake up the next day to, to go to school. So, so that was very hard. But uh, uh, I learned a big lesson from working at, at McDonald's. is that I cannot work at McDonald's for the rest of my life. I have to do well in, in school. And that's what I did. After coming to America, this country gave me an opportunity to work very hard and to achieve my dream. I was able to go to school. That's what the reason why I came to this country. I graduated from university, but I'm here today because I had so many great mentors, not just one, who believed in me and, and who uh, took a chance uh, and believed that I would be successful in my career of, ch of choice. The commitment from the leadership uh, and everyone here at UT Southwestern on diversity, inclusion, and equality based on the idea that science and medicine have no racial or gender boundary have created a working environment that I feel very be belonging. I came to work every day knowing that I'm being respected and that my idea and my contribution count towards the mission of this university. I'm Anupam Raina. I work as a postdoctoral researcher in the Department of Molecular Biology, and I'm a neurobiologist by profession and study Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. So I've been in UD Southwestern for one and a half years as of now. I'm basically from the valley of Kashmir, the home of Himalayas from India. So my ancestors and parents had a very good life until we were forced to move out of our hometown uh, because of religious riots that took place in 1989. Therefore, I was born in New Delhi and I was raised in the east and the west of India. I did my bachelor's and master's in the south of India and where I worked as a scientist. In my entire clan, I'm the first one to travel from the east to the west. Towards the end of my PhD, I have moved to the US. So the transition was very smooth, I would say, because UD Southwestern really provided me most of the, uh, um, the information where to search the, for an apartment, the reviews of students for, each, for everything. It was really great. One thing that UD Southwestern has done to make me a sense of belonging here is to give me an opportunity to narrate my story as I have never ever done this before, wherever I have been. So I think UD Southwestern has made me feel that I'm important and I matter. My name is Helen Yin. I am a professor of physiology and associate dean of the Office of Women's Careers. And I came to uh, UT Southwestern in 1979, so I'm one of the old timers, um, long, long time ago. 
I was born in Shanghai, China. And during that time, the civil war between the nationalist, which was the one in power, and the communist China uh, were winding down. And my parents realized that they would not do very well under communist rule. So they moved to Hong Kong. Uh, as Shanghainese, there is a large emigration of Shanghainese to, to Hong Kong, which speaks Cantonese. So my parents are strangers in a strange land, even though everybody is Chinese. They didn't speak the language, the food is all different, everything is different. But they strived and they were able to build a life. So that is a very good immigrant story of immigrants coming from one part of the country to another. During this time, for 24 years, there was no communication between my parents and their extended family in China because there was no official uh, communications between China, China to the outside world. So in 1972, Nixon, President Nixon, opened up relations and the floodgate opened. So that is when the story of going from east to west started. Uh, I became a uh, undergraduate at United States and did graduate school and I got my citizenship. And my family, uh, about eight of my cousins also came here for graduate school. And so now we have four generations living in the United States. And in terms of UT Southwestern, we have a huge population of AAPIs. Uh, we have 24% Asians. Uh, that is much higher than the Dallas-Fort Worth of 7.9%. And in terms of faculty and medical students, we also have a huge amount. So they will be the future of the United States uh, and UT Southwestern. And I think we needed to elevate the idea that they are major contributors as well. At UT Southwestern, as we come together to promote health and a healthy society that enables achievement of full human potential, we recognize that we are also standing on the shoulders of the many great individuals who walk these halls before us. Join us this Asian Pacific American Heritage Month and every month in honoring the history, personal stories, and journeys of all our Asian Pacific Islander American employees. Mm -hmm.